You might never really consume sugar again after watching this because this kind of confirms that sugar might be the worst food when it comes down to the gut. So what this study was looking at was how sugar compared to even some pretty scary sounding chemicals affected our gut junctions. So when we think of the gut, a lot of times we think the microbiome but we're gonna talk about how sugar impacts the actual cells that line our gut and how sugar impacts the mucosal layer that sort of outlines the inside of our gut. And I'll explain how that works and why that works in just a second. After today's video, I put a link down below for Thrive Market. That is a 30% off discount link. So it gets you 30% off whatever you load up in your grocery cart, and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. So it's 30% off whether you want snacks, whether you want meat, whether you want whatever. So you load up your grocery cart, use that special link, and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. And there's also a free $60 gift that you get as well when you use that special link down below. Thrive Market has been a sponsor for over half a decade on this channel. So if you support them, then you directly support this channel and it helps us continue to do what we do. Plus you're getting totally bang up savings on all your groceries. So use that link in the top line of the description underneath this video. So today's study that we're talking about was published in Disease, Models and Mechanisms. Now, this was fascinating because it wanted to see, hey, if we expose intestinal cells, the epithelial cells, to sugar or to some of these other things, which one's worse? So it used sugar, it used something called tween, which is a pretty aggressive emulsifier. It used sodium chloride, which is pretty much just salt. And then it also looked at titanium dioxide. Now, titanium dioxide, I've talked about on this channel, it's a pretty sketchy thing. It's so bad that's banned in the EU. What they found is that when they exposed intestinal cells to various amounts of these across the board, even in a dose dependent fashion, like even at low dose versus high dose, the one that always seemed to be the worst was sugar. However, high concentrations of sugar seem to cause the most intestinal permeability. Why is permeability such a problem? Like, don't we want to be able to absorb nutrients through our gut? Think of it like this, okay? This is your gut, right? You have these tight junctions that are really ever so slight. These tight junctions allow for microparticles, things that need to get in nutrients, fluids, things like that to get into our bloodstream, okay? But the moment that these junctions get damaged and the gut becomes more permeable, you're absorbing things that shouldn't really be absorbed because they're not fully digested or broken down yet. The most common theme here would be things like allergens. Like maybe you don't have an allergic response to something, but you kind of developed one and you don't really know why. A lot of times it comes back to the gut, right? So when you're looking at how sugar impacts this, it is one of the strongest compounds for increasing gut permeability. But sugar's natural, like what's the deal here? No, there's a very big difference between having sugar in the form of fruit, which is going to have polyphenols, and it's also going to have antioxidants, and it's going to have a lot of additional support to prevent sort of the oxidative damage and inflammatory response that would come from say, refined sugar. So of course our bodies are designed to digest sugars, but when you start taking it in a bleached refined form, you're lacking all the supporting mechanisms that go with it. It's like when you eat a kiwi or an apple, you're not just getting sugar, you're getting fiber, you're getting pectin, you're getting polyphenols, you're getting antioxidants, you're getting vitamins, there's actual nutrition there. And that changes things versus a shock to the system with a bleached refined sugar. The other thing that this study found sugar did is it decreased what is called intestinal alkaline phosphatase. This is the gut mucosal defense factor. Now we have our gut and we have the cells within our gut, but then we have a layer of mucus that protects our gut. And I'm gonna use my own personal example here, okay? Just so that it makes sense because it's top of mind for me too. I had an intestinal parasite a few weeks ago. It was gnarly, it was really bad, really messed me up. And one of the long lasting side effects of that is you have pretty serious damage to your gut mucosal layer and your stomach lining. So getting gastritis and things like that are very prevalent after foodborne illness or parasites. What ended up happening to me is I ended up with multiple peptic ulcers now as a result because the gut lining and the mucosal layer were damaged. That's the kind of thing that happens when your gut mucosal layer is non-existent because that mucus is normally there to protect from the hydrochloric acid, to protect from other things. If that's broken down, you are much more susceptible to issues and much more susceptible to IBS and other things that are gonna be longer term problems. 
So breaking down the mucosal layer in a lot of ways is almost more damaging than making the gut more permeable because the inflammatory response from having sugar and having a permeable gut, that could affect you in the short term and a acute spike in inflammation, but having the damage to the mucosal layer could allow other damaging things to cause more long-term issues. So my solution here is not to say, hey, never have sugar. My solution here is to consume things that support your gut mucosal layer. So consume things, and if you're gonna get sugar, get it in a natural form as much as possible. In fact, there's even literature that suggests crazy enough that possibly like artificial sweeteners might even be better than sugar in this particular case, but they're both bad, pick your poison. But consuming things like collagen, consuming things like bone broth, consuming things that are a little easier to digest and reducing trans fats, so no more hydrogenated fats, no more partially hydrogenated soybean oil, things like that. These allow your gut to restore and can actually provide support for that mucosal layer. So again, it's not just about the microbiome. What good is taking care of your bacteria if your bacteria can't live in a house where they're actually safe? As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.